Praise the Lord. Did I hear you? I said, Praise the Lord. If you are ready for me, I'll know by the way you answer. If you are not ready, I will know by the way you answer. Should I, you know, go back to my seat? Are you getting ready? How many of you are going to pay attention? Attention. With your mind, with your spirit, with your eyes, with your ears, with your soul, with your, every part of you are going to pay attention. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray together. Once again, I want to appreciate your being here. All those who are here from other churches. And also are here from Deep Life Bible Church, Victorious Youth of this generation. Why don't you put your hands together for Jesus? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Now, that's how you clap when I say put your hands together for Jesus. Now, I'm going to say it another way. Praise the Lord. Are you, are you ready to listen to me? Now you are not going to put your hands together. You are going to jam your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Don't worry about me. I just wanted the devil to become dead by your clapping. So that I'll say, that is enough. Leave me alone. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray what will make everyone victorious and more than a conqueror. I pray that you give to every boy, every girl, every brother, every sister, every father, every mother here this morning in Jesus' name. I will pray for everyone here, O oh Lord, everyone hearing the sound of my voice, that Lord, the power, the strength, the ability, the authority to overcome, you will grant to everyone in Jesus' name. All of those, our brothers and sisters, our sons, our daughters, everyone in all the locations in Nigeria, in Africa and beyond, who are hearing your words now, I pray, Lord, the spirit to conquer. The spirit to overcome and the spirit to conquer every enemy of progress. Grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Those who are falling will rise up. Those who have failed will not begin to succeed. I pray that your word will make a turning point in every life this day in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. You are just wonderful. This is the best congregation I ever spoke to since I began preaching. Amen. We can sit down now and we're going to take in the word of God. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And in verse 37, Romans chapter 8, verse 37, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm talking to you on the important message this morning of conquering the enemies of progress. We came here to find out how can we succeed? How can we be on high, not below? How can we become the head and not remain the tail? How can we pass every exam, not just narrowly, but pass for distinction? How can we be on top of the storm? On top of the waves, on top of every problem of every life from today till the end of life. That's why we came here. And all of us who are in various locations where our young people are gathered together, this is what you came to learn. If we're going to do that, become the head and not the tail, 
succeed and not fail overcome and not be defeated if that is going to happen we must know how to conquer the enemies of progress that's why this morning we're looking at that message conquering the enemies of progress in first john chapter 4 verse 4 first john chapter 4 verse 4 ye of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world when he says those in the world he's talking about the enemies the enemies are in the world and he says we little children he says we have overcome them we have conquered them we have prevailed over them we have defeated them because greater is he mightier is he stronger is he that lives within us than he that lives in the world i want you to mark it your bible that it says little children that means then we cannot give all the victory to the adults we cannot give all the success to the adults we cannot give all the overcoming strength and power to the adults he says ye of god little children and you have overcome them even as little children because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world why don't you say this after me greater is he that is in me than all the enemies in the world greater is he let's say that again that is in me than all the enemies in the world that's the reason you are going to conquer i don't see any failure here this morning i don't see any defeated one here this morning I don't see anyone here this morning that will remain the tail all his life. All I see here this morning, I see conquerors. I see victors. I see overcomers. And thank God you are one of us overcomers in Jesus' name. But you know, if we're going to fight the enemy and succeed, if we're going to fight the enemy and overcome, if we're going to wage war against the enemies of progress and we're going to defeat at every corner every turn of the way we must know what the enemy is lest you fight the wrong personality and if you're fighting the wrong person and then you leave the real enemy aside you might find after you have defeated all the people you are fighting the enemy is still saying i'm here I'm here, I'm still going to wage war against you. That's the reason why, number one, I'm dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the description of the great enemy. The description of the great enemy. What I'm saying is, you're on a journey. On a journey to the top of the mountain. What I'm saying is, you're on a journey. You're on a journey to success. On a journey to a destiny of joy and happiness, fulfillment and uh, success. And then in that journey, there, is any, uh, there are enemies and those enemies confront you. I need to describe those enemies to you so that if you meet them, you'll say, I recognize you. I know you are the one. You want to stop my journey you want to kill my dream and you want to stop me before i get to my destination i know you and i'm not going to allow you to do that that's what i'm taking number one the description of the great enemy number two deliverance from the great enemy i come to rejoice with you today i come to celebrate with you 
that you are going to be delivered from the great enemy in Jesus name I thought my children would say Amen Deliverance from the great enemy Number three Dominion over the great enemy There is dominion There is authority There is power And we are going to have dominion in Jesus name What's number one again? The description of the great enemy I'm coming to you for Samuel chapter 17 First Samuel chapter 17 In First Samuel chapter 17 Here we meet the enemy For Samuel chapter 17 I'm reading verse 4 And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named tell me the name tell me the name again don't be afraid pronounce the name name Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and his span that's the enemy it's we're told here the enemy of the whole nation and the enemy of the king Saul and now finally the enemy of David the youth David the youth don't ever forget that you see many people they don't understand that this Goliath yes I know he was against the nation Israel yes I know he was against Saul but let me paint the picture for you this is chapter 17 in chapter 16 David had been anointed king in chapter 16 David had been promoted to be the head in chapter 16 Saul had been put aside and David the youth had come to take his place although Saul did not know at that time but David knew the anointing had come upon David. He was to be the head. He was to be the reigning one. He was to be the successor of Saul. And now the enemy came. What was the enemy trying to do? And the enemy said, I'll destroy Israel. As they promoted you to be the head, you have nobody to reign over. And then I'm going to even destroy Saul, your predecessor. And once I destroy the root, the branch is gone. And if you show up, David the youth, I'm going to destroy you before you even begin to reign. And so that's why we know that this Goliath was actually an enemy of David. And David knew. Then he came, he had what the Philistines said, and David said, I'm not going to back out, I'm not going to turn back, I'm going to confront this enemy. Now, can I describe the enemy for you? You're going to write the word Goliath, Goliath, and you write it vertically, G-O-L-I-A-T. H. I'm asking a question now for a child in school. I'm asking a question for a child in an institution. I'm asking a question for a student in college. I'm asking a question from a, with a student at the university. I'm asking a question from a teenager that is just waking up in life and is saying, I'm going to the top. I'm on a journey. And I'm going to reach the end of that journey. And he says, greater is he that is in me. And I know that all the enemies in the world, there is nothing they can do. I am getting there. I'm going there. I'm grabbing it. I'm holding it. I'm having the success. What is the enemy? 
who is the enemy that will try and find and kind of stop the journey, the onward journey and the progress of such a child, of such a student and of such a candidate for success. G O L I A T H. Pronounce that for me. Goliath. G is gambling. And you know, there are young people and they have little resources, little resources, and they have some little riches, and they have some wealth, and they have some pocket money, and they have some things they can say, Praise the Lord, this is mine. And the enemy will come, and the enemy go that G for gambling, gambling. And then they take what they have, they never know. They're looking at Goliath on the field while the Goliath is right there at the pool. They're looking for Goliath far away in a distant land while the Goliath is right there where they're playing the dice and the cards. They're looking for the Goliath far away in a foreign land while the Goliath is right there where you take your money and you put it inside and you put it inside thinking that something will come out. Goliath, that's the first thing about the enemy. Wanting to have gain without pain. Wanting to have wealth without work. Wanting to have limited, unlimited resources without labor. Gambling. G for gambling. I'm looking at Luke chapter 15 verse 13. Luke chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 13. Here it says concerning this prodigal son who thought he was going to actually become great. And he went into a far country. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted all the substance with riotous living. You know, if you, as you are starting out in life, if you will allow that kind of terrible habit, bad habit, to get hold of you, it's an enemy that stops you from getting to the top. Therefore, make up your mind. You see all the children gambling, you say, oh, they face the enemy, they don't know. They wish, the enemy is waging war against them, they don't know. Gambling, I will not gamble. I said I will not gamble. I said I will not gamble. Oh, occultism, occultism. And you know many people that have bright future, great future, wonderful future. And you do not know that Goliath, the Goliath of occultism is following after them. And you know, they introduce them to this kind of occultism. And they say, you know what? If you join, you know the kind of people that are there in the court. They are the children of rich people and the children of great, great politicians and the children of highly placed shops. And when you join the cult, you're making yourself somebody great, a good guy, and you're top minded. And then nothing will be able to face your challenge. They wouldn't even tell you it's going to be for your protection. Because you know, once you wear the clothes, and once you wear the pair of trousers, and once you wear the shirt, and once they see the mark, nobody can touch you. You become untouchable. They tell you a lot of lies to influence you to come and be defeated by Goliath of occultism. But you know, occultism, it will take your chance of being an overcomer. Take that away. It will destroy you completely. But I'm praying for you that any time they come and they introduce that thing to you that they call occultism, you will remember that is Goliath. You are destined for the throne and you are destined to succeed. You will not yield to them. I said you will not yield to them. You will say no to Goliath and one stone that you throw at Goliath, Goliath of occultism will fall down before you in Jesus' name. In First Chronicles chapter 10, First Chronicles chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14. So Saul died. 
for his transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit, and to inquire of it, and he inquired not of the Lord, therefore, 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 he slew him. And he turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. It was that occultism, consultation with familiar spirit, that made Saul to die prematurely. You will not die prematurely. I said you will not die prematurely. You will fight against and resist and reject the good night of Gambling, the goulash of occultism, L, lawlessness, lawlessness, lawlessness. It's a terrible, it's a terrible enemy. And you know the people that they don't observe any rule, they don't observe any do's and don'ts, and they don't want to hear about any law and order. Wake up at this time, get to school at this time. Pay attention to your teachers at this time. Write your tests at this time. Submit your papers at this time. Don't hang out with never do wells anytime. They don't want to hear. They just want to be lawless. Lawless. Although they might, you know, they look nice and they look very simple but inside them there is that lawlessness and they don't know that once that habit of lawlessness develops in you that's a goliath in the making that's the reason you want to say by the grace of god i'm not going to allow anything anything that's against the law of god Anything that's against the law of the nation. I'm not going to allow that because I'm destined to the top. Because once that lawlessness comes, don't you understand? That it's the L of Goliath. And you don't want to allow that so that that top, you will get there. I said that top, you will get there. Look at Judges chapter 21. Judges chapter 21, lawlessness. Verse 25, Judges 21, verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That's the description of lawlessness. Everyone doing whatever he wants. They don't pay attention to any announcement. They don't pay attention to anything we say in the school assembly. They don't pay attention to whatever daddy is saying. They don't pay attention to what mommy is carefully laying down, saying, my daughter, my son, here is the way to live. They don't pay any attention to any pastor in any church. They don't pay attention to any school, church, any school or church school leader. They don't pay attention to any of our youth leaders who are leading us. They just say, get out of my way. I want to do my own thing, my own way. I don't want to listen to any instruction. That's enough. They are the people that do whatsoever, whatsoever is right in their own eyes. They say, if it feels good, do it. They say, if that thing turns you on, makes you happy, makes you joyful, if it's drug and makes you feel good, if it's chemical and it makes you feel high, if it's marijuana and it makes you feel top-minded, and if it is whatever, we we whatever it is, if it makes you feel on top of the world, go ahead, try it. Those are the people, lawlessness, they don't observe any order any law any instruction from the bible and it is the goliath that is fighting against their progress you will win i said you will win but you see these people why were they defeated they were defeated because of lawlessness in those days there was no king in israel 
Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. I. What's the next letter after L? Tell me now. I is idleness. 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 Uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that's a great, great, great enemy. Enemy of progress. Show me a boy. Uh, show me a girl that wants to succeed in life. That wants to make distinction in everything that he or she does. There is something you are going to fight. We call it idleness or indolence. You fight it. You fight it. You don't allow it to have any place in your heart, any place in your life. Idleness, indolence. We're looking at Psalm, uh, sorry, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which have been no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travels, and thy want, thy poverty, thy penury, as an armed man. Indolence, idleness. Is a great, great enemy in the family of Goliath. A addiction, addiction, addiction. A that's addiction. You know, sometimes you might find another boy that is saying, Come, can I tell you something? Come, don't, don't tell any other person. We do this in secret. And then you'll bring out something that looks like injection. And then you're terrified. You say, well, don't be afraid. Let me demonstrate it to you. And then they inject themselves. And they pass some real stimulants, chemicals, into their veins. And the moment he does that, in a few minutes, his eyes will become wide, wild. And then it appears his muscles begin to grow even before your face right there. And then if he's going to run, he runs, he runs, he never gets tired. And then he can carry something very heavy and very big. And he comes back to you and he says, you know that? Instant power. Instant boldness. You know, if you don't want to be a coward, you don't want to be timid, you don't want to be faithful, you don't want to be fearful, you want to be bold, audacious, and courageous. Here is it. Injection. And it's addiction. They get addicted to that. Did you hear recently of that great, great, great singer, pop singer? I don't want to mention his name. I think you should know his name. That died. And then when they carried out the investigation, the doctors they said, yes, actually, he had become addicted to this thing. Sometimes it's even just like a sleeping pill. And it is something that to relax himself and to make him well rested and to give him confidence on the stage and to make him to be able to do daring things on the stage. The dramatists, they have that problem. And those you can, uh, the, the people that uh, you know record films, they have that problem. And the people on the athletic field, they have that problem. And the people that just want to be, just, just want to be bold and courageous and audacious in the public, they have that problem. And instead of developing their natural traits and skills and character, they depend upon the drugs to give that to them. They become addicted. And that's a great enemy, like it happened to that great, highly respected by the people who love this kind of music and this kind of shows, like it happened to him. The addiction cuts down his life 
I pray that addiction will not ruin your life. I said it will not ruin your life. That's the Goliath that he couldn't face, he couldn't handle. That's the reason why you shouldn't do anything with something like that. You get addicted with. We're looking at, at Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has babblings? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Uh, here the writer is talking about one of the drugs of his day, alcohol. But today now it's not only really alcohol. My Regina is there. Those chemicals are there. Heroin there. And cocaine there. And many other, many other stuff that makes people get into this addiction. And it says, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is rich, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, at the last it biteth like a savage, and stingeth like an adder. It's terrible. I said it's terrible. But that terrible thing will not come to you in Jesus' name. Goliath. G was that. O was that. L was that. I was that. A was that. Now T. Can you imagine? The people that want to succeed. The people that want to pass every exam. The people that want to be on the top, can you imagine? The people that want to be the head and not the tail. And there is this T that stops them. Can I tell you? Can you guess? You know what? It, it looks innocent. It looks simple. It looks like of course, it makes me friendly with people. Friendly with people, but I but he friendship leads to failure. T talkativeness. What is it? Talk, 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 talk. Go and read. No, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Go and study. No, I'm talking with my friends. Now go and study. Exam is coming. No, I enjoy talk, 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 talk. You will fail the exam. Talking, talking, talking without sitting down to read, to study. You'll, you'll discover that that talkativeness then becomes a good liar in your life. I pray that today the Lord will set you free in Jesus' name. I need a good, good amen. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23. In all labor there is profit, but tell me the rest. I'm waiting for you to read it for me, but the talk of the leaves tendeth only to penury. That's poverty. You know, the people who just spend all the time talking, all the time talking, all the time talking. They don't recognize the exam is coming. They don't understand that this job is competitive. And that if you're going to make it, a time concern say, talk, get aside. No time to talk now. It's time to study. It's time to study. Talk at cheapness is a great enemy. Age, age, half-heartedness. Half-heartedness. When you don't put all your heart into what you're doing, when you're half-hearted, you're there, you're not there, you want to, you don't want to. 
You are deciding, you are withdrawing from decision. You want to go, but you are withdrawing. Half-heartedness. That leads to failure. That's why we're told in 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter, chapter 18. Verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21 And Elijah came unto all the people And said How long all she between two opinions How long all she between two opinions Indecision Where do you stand? What are you? What do you want to be in life? What are you going to get in life? When are you going to get to the place you are going? Indecision, half heartedness. How long all she between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. How could they answer? How could they answer? The Goliath of half heartedness had sealed their mouths. Nothing will seal your mouth. And nothing will stop your journey. Where are you getting to? I said, where do you want to get to? To the top, to the top, to the top. You'll be the head, you'll not be the tail. In Jesus' name. Now you know the enemy. The gambling. The occultism. The lawlessness. The idleness. The addiction. The talkativeness. The hard heartedness of the stone of study and seriousness. We're going to this we're going to destroy that Goliath in Jesus' name. Point number two. What's point number two? Can you remind me? Deliverance from the great enemy. You are delivered today in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty six. Romans 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Our deliverer is Jesus Christ. He has come already. He died on the cross of Calvary. He died for you. He died for your brother there. He died for your sister there. He died for your friend there. He died for all of your classmates. He died for all of your schoolmates. He died for you and died for everyone. And because of that, you can have deliverance from the great enemy. If you are trying to fight Goliath, Trying to fight gambling, occultism, lawlessness, idleness, addiction, talkativeness, and half-heartedness. And you cannot do it yourself successfully. Jesus will help you. I said Jesus will help you. Overcoming, you are going to overcome. Because already the Lord has promised us that there is deliverance for you. Obadiah, Obadiah, it has only one chapter. It's very near the edge of the Old Testament. Just open the last book of the Old Testament and then keep on turning back and turning back and turning back and you'll get to Obadiah. 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 Obadiah is waiting for you. He said, have you not found me? I'm here. I'm here. Look at me. Have you found Obadiah? How many of you have found Obadiah? Oh, Obadiah is your friend. Now you can put down your hands. Thank God bless you. Look at verse 17. Obadiah verse 17 But upon Mount Zion shall be Tell me, tell me Shall be deliverance And there shall be holiness And the house of Jacob shall Possess their possession You came here to possess today You are going to possess Because now Deliverance is available for you And you are going to have that deliverance in Jesus name 
Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. Now we're going to read this together. And you're going to make it very personal, very personal. And you say it from the depth of your heart. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. Are we ready? One, two, go. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Now, we're going to read that again. And you'll put the emphasis on me. Once you go. Now, I want only male voices, only the boys now, the boys. Let me see if your voice can compete with mine. I want to see the boys now. Boys, where are you? Can you stand up with your Bible open? Only boys, only boys. You're going to read that with me. And I'm telling you, you are delivered today. You are standing upon the head of all your enemies. You will march, you will tread upon those enemies. They will never be able to conquer you anymore. As you stand up like a mighty army, you are an unconquerable soldier from today in Jesus' name. Boys, we're not going to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. Won't you go? It is done in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. Do I have my daughters there? The girls. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Where are you today? Wonderful. Wonderful. I see you there like Esther. You are victorious. I see you there like Deborah. You are victorious. I see you there like Ruth. Nothing will ever conquer you again in Jesus' name. Now let me hear those voices and what, what, when you read this, I'm telling you, Goliath is going to tremble. And you are going to defeat every Goliath in your life in Jesus' name. First, second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, one, two, go. Boys and girls, everybody standing up to read together. Everybody, 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 where are you? One, two, go. Heaven has registered your deliverance. And the angels are rejoicing with you. You are delivered in Jesus' name. You can see now God bless you boys and girls. You are just wonderful. You are just wonderful. Point number three. Dominion over the great enemy. Everybody say dominion. Dominion over the great enemy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57. 1 Corinthians Chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're thanking God, we're celebrating because the Lord has granted us the victory. And that victory, you will never lose it in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. 
Goliath will not have dominion over you. Gambling will not have dominion over you. Occultism will not have dominion over you. Lawlessness will not have dominion over you. Idleness, indolence will not have dominion over you. Addiction will not have dominion over you. Talkativeness. Everybody say talkativeness. And say talkativeness will not have dominion over me. Talk achievements will not have dominion over you in Jesus' name. Have heartedness will not have dominion over you in Jesus' name. We're looking at first John. First John chapter four verse four. Ye are of God said born again, ye are of God. Your sins are forgiven, ye are of God. You have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, ye are of God. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. I have overcome. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And remember, that greater one living inside you never lost a battle. Every battle in your life, the greater one that lives inside you will make you to overcome in Jesus' name. Chapter 5, verse 4. Chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. Once you are born again, once you are a child of God, and Jesus the Savior, the Redeemer, living on the inside of you, you overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. That means then as you believe in God, as you believe in Christ, you are born again, you are a child of God. And that faith carries you on. You are, overcomer, you are an overcomer every time in Jesus' name. Look at that word, faith. Have you seen that? That's the last word in that verse. F-A-I-T-H. You understand? F, Father, A, and I, together, here. That's faith. Father, and I, together, here. That means every time the enemy comes, oh, say, enemy, you're wasting your time. Faith, Father and I together here. At any time, temptation comes. Oh, see, so you're wasting your time. Because faith, Father and I together here. And because the Father is always with me. I'm always with the Father. And Jesus is living on the inside of me. And the Holy Ghost is my strengthener and comforter. I overcome every time. And I pass that on to you from today. You overcome every time in Jesus' name. Conquering the enemies of progress. Let us, let's go back again to that. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are, you are, I am, everybody say, I am, more than a conqueror, through him that loved me. Any conqueror there today? Overcomer there today? Why don't you stand up like a soldier? And don't, don't allow the devil to play any trick around you anymore. You're an overcomer. Become serious now like an overcomer. Uh, 
make your face like that of a conquering soldier and then stand firm and stand erect like a real conquering soldier and say in all these things say it in all these things I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer you have entered into the conqueror's zone right now. You are no more a defeated boy, a defeated girl. If Jesus is in your life and you love Jesus and you know that Jesus loves you. And you know all the enemies of progress. And you know that today he makes you an overcomer. Just tell the Lord, oh Lord, I thank you. The enemy cannot hide in the dark anymore. I recognize the enemy. I fight against that enemy. And will Jesus help? And will Jesus trace? And will Jesus' ability within me? I overcome. You overcome. Overcome the gambling. Overcome the occultism. Overcome the lawlessness. Overcome the idleness. Overcome the addiction. Overcome the talkativeness. Overcome the half heartedness. And give yourself completely to Christ. He is your deliverer, He is your Savior. He is the one that takes you to victory every day. You're on your journey to the top, on your journey to the peak, on your journey to the summit. You're on your journey to, to the highest level of your career. You don't want any enemy to stop you by the wayside. You are an overcomer. Not only an overcomer on a Thursday, overcomer on every day. Not only overcomer in GS, overcomer in SS, overcomer at the university, overcomer every time. It's a lifelong victory. Always remember, recognize, always recognize, always recognize that's the enemy, the gambling, the occultism, the lawlessness, the idleness, the addiction, the talkativeness, and the affordedness. Never, 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 never give any way, any chance, any chance, any chance to those enemies. Just say, oh Lord, I thank you. Oh Lord, I thank you. I am an overcomer. You are, you are, you are. So Christ to strengthens you. And remember, you need Jesus to help you. Jesus to help you. Jesus to help you. Just say, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. I give my heart to you. Today, I make a decision. I receive you into my heart. And then once he enters into your heart, that's a greater one. That's a greater one. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I have an amen of the conquerors? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I'm celebrating with you already because I know, I know, I know that you have overcome already in Jesus' name. I will never stop celebration. 
Because every day I'm going to meet one of you And then you'll say, Pastor, I'm there already And I'll say, congrats, shake my hand Because you'll be there I said you'll be there I said you'll be there Celebrate Celebrate I said celebrate I said celebrate I said celebrate Praise the Lord I celebrate with all of you because I know the greater one is living on the inside of you and it's not going to take you long. You're going to see that in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Now, let's pay, let's pay attention now. You know what? I want to give you a chance. Should in case there is any doubt in your mind, any doubt, is Jesus inside me or not? Because it's only when Jesus is on the inside. Because it says, greater is he that is in you. Not just around you, behind you, in front of you, outside you, in you. And I want to give you that chance, that opportunity. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. And if any of you, if you hear my voice and you open the door, I will come in. And once he comes in, that's the greater one on the inside. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want to give him the chance to enter right now. As he says, I'm standing here, I'm standing here, I'm standing here at the door of your heart. And I want to enter in. The greater one, the victorious one, the one that never lost a battle, the one that said, it is finished, and he finished and blew up the head of the devil. The victorious one is standing at the door right now. And he's saying, I'm knocking. Anyone that opens the door, I'll enter in. You want to give him a chance to enter in now? Where are you? Can you just raise up your hand and pray with you now? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm waiting for you. Raise up your hand right now. Where are you? Where are you? Wave the hand at me. Your father went there. I want to see you. Praise the Lord. Okay, I can see your hand. I can see that. Keep that hand up. Keep that hand up. And say this after me. Lord Jesus. I know you stand at the door of my heart. You're knocking. I've heard the knock. I open the door. Lord Jesus, I turn away from my sin. Enter into my heart. Say that. Enter into my heart. Be my Savior. Lord, Lord, I'm taking that decision. I receive you as my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am now saved. In Jesus' name. Keep those thanks of Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I bless your name today for all these young people. Those who have received you as their Savior in the past, and those who are doing it today, oh Lord, I pray, you'll be mighty, you'll be strong, you'll be great, you'll be victorious from the inside of them, in Jesus' name. And all those enemies of progress, oh Lord, I pray, your strength, your grace, your mercy, your love, your power, will enter into them. They will conquer, they will overcome every time, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray if there is any disease, any demon, any problem that is trying to stop their way, you demon and you disease, I command you, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that from this day, their victory, their success will be confirmed from heaven in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, turn to the person by your side and say, I have the victory. And also tell them, you have the victory too. We'll celebrate together. Say that to them. We'll celebrate together. Jam your hands together for Jesus.